Hi everyone. I want to walk through uh, an example of torsional impact loading. So basically, same as uh, we've talked about, if we have a rotating system and it suddenly um, experiences a change in loading, how can we analyze what's going on? So I have an example um, on the screen here, which basically shows two grinding wheels, one at either end of the shaft, uh, a drive system in the middle, probably a pulley for like a belt uh, drive. And we have some dimensions given here. And then we want to know what's happening um, if we're grinding on the right hand wheel and suddenly it becomes jammed. So we did something catastrophic and our material got jammed in there and it brought that, that grinding wheel to a complete stop. What can we expect to happen to the shaft? So we've gotten got some uh, given information. The whole system is rotating at 2400 RPM when this happens. Uh, we have a bulk modulus um, of 79 gigapascals. And when you think about what's going to happen, we've, we've jammed the right hand side and then we have this mass spinning out on the left, right? And that mass all of a sudden is coming to a stop, but it's, you know, it's, it's got mass. So it's, it's got momentum, which means it's going to, you know, try to continue turning and twist the shaft. So we've got the density of that grinding wheel material so that we can understand what's going on with that mass. So as we've uh, done in our notes, a good place to start on this problem is using energy. And the main source of energy in this system is our, our grinding wheel that's rotating out on the left that suddenly comes to a stop. And it's, um, you can imagine that it's storing energy in that rotation, you know, high speed rotation of that, that grinding disc. The shaft also would have some energy as well, but being that it's relatively small diameter compared to the disc, it's probably not um, contributing nearly as much. So we'll neglect that in this case. So we have our kinetic energy, which for a, a rotating system has an equation that looks like one half I omega squared. So I being uh, mass moment of inertia. And for uh, a circular object, Mass moment of inertia is equal to one half mR squared, so that's something we can look up. And we don't know the mass, but we do generally know how to solve for mass, which is to take the volume. So I'll start with area pi r squared and turn it into volume by multiplying by thickness and then multiply, the, multiply that by rho, which is our density that we have given. So if I substitute these values, m into the equation for i and then the resulting i into the equation for kinetic energy, what I end up with is kinetic energy equal to 1 fourth pi r to the fourth t rho omega squared. And I can start substituting quantities in here. So 1 fourth pi r in this case, we're talking about our, our rotating mass out here on the end. So it's got a diameter of 120 millimeters. So that would be 0 0.06 meters in radius taken to the fourth. Thickness, that's to give us the volume of this grinding disc on the left. So that's 20 millimeters. So that's 0 0.02 meters. I have 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And lastly, I have 2,400 RPM. I'm going to convert that to radians per second by multiplying it by 2, uh, two pi over 60. And that's all squared. So now if I calculate all this out, what I end up getting is 25.72. And if we worked through our units and carried that through carefully, we'd find that we have units of Newton meters, which is what we'd expect for um, this kinetic energy. Scroll down a little bit, if I can find my mouse. Okay. 
So from this kinetic energy, we can go ahead and calculate our shear stress. So this kind of you know gives us an example of, of why it's so useful um, in some cases to have these stress equations in terms of energy. So rehashing the equation I had before and substituting in values, I have two square root of 25.72 times 79 e to the ninth divided by volume. And now just being careful, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about volume of the shaft because the stress is being applied to the shaft. The disc that is rotating, that's our energy storage vessel. And then that energy is going to get dissipated as stress through the shaft once this, this jam happens. So my volume is going to be pi r, which in this case is 10 millimeters, so 0 0.01 meters squared times length, which is given as 250 millimeters, so point, 0 0.25. close my square root. And if I calculate all of these uh, numbers, I'm going to get 321.7 times 10 to the sixth pascals, which is of course 321.7 megapascals. And this then represents the stress that I would expect to find. Now, just out of curiosity, we could actually calculate what we would expect uh, the deflection to be for our part. So if I rewrite deflection, uh, I have a standard equation for deflection, which is TL over JG. Um, I can actually uh, rewrite this in terms of tau, which is tau L over RG if I make some substitutions. So if I go ahead and calculate that, I have 321.7 times 10 to the sixth. Length again is 0 0.25, radius 0 0.01, and G is 79 E to the ninth. And all of that's going to come out to be approximately 0 0.1 radians, which I could convert to degrees, and I get about 5.7 degrees. So summing all of that up, if I go ahead and am grinding, my material gets stuck and jams the whole thing. One, it's going to be loud. Uh, but that mass that's rotating out on the left-hand side slams to a stop. The whole shaft is going to experience a stress of 321.7 megapascals, and it's going to rotate by 5.7 degrees, you know, and then probably sit there bouncing back and forth, making a lot of noise. So we could then compare that stress against our, our yield um, criteria for the shaft, see if we've permanently deformed our shaft as a result, um, and kind of analyze the situation further as needed. All right. So I'll go ahead and stop there. Thanks.